So a new Onslaught season is upon us, and it is time to update the list of the best tanks to use in Onslaught. Starting out with the light tanks. Now this needs to be very, very clear. If you are not very good in a light tank, you should not pick a light tank in Onslaught. You need to know how to use it and how to use the ability properly to actually be able to help your team. That being said, the number one light tank that you should be using is the RHM. And in certain situations, maybe the T100LT. But really, it should be the RHM. The EBR is actually kind of useless because it doesn't have the spotting plane. So you're kind of just throwing for your team if you pick an EBR over an RHM. And please do not pick two light tanks. You do not need two light tanks. You only need one on your team. If someone else has the light tank, then just do the gentlemanly thing and just let them play it. Or you ask nicely and ask if you could play it instead of them. Now for equipment on the light tanks, you want to make sure that you have radio set because that will allow you to spot the enemy for longer. As you can see with the modifier, the spotting time is actually down to three seconds. If you use radio set, you're then bumping that up to five seconds for what you are spotting. But then if you get spotted, you are only spotted for one second. That then means that if you are going around on the flank and you quickly shoot, you get spotted. You're only spotted for one second. You can quickly back off and then readjust. And then if you go along and get designated target with the directive, if you are then looking at the enemy and you spot them, it is then spotted for an extra 7.42 seconds, which means that they are then spotted for 10 seconds, which is the normal time in a random battle. So I would always recommend that you have radio set on your light tanks, you have a rammer, and then with this one, you can pick vents, you could pick hardening. It doesn't really matter too much about the last one, but I'd probably go with vents overall. Now for medium tanks, these are the main ones I would recommend. You have the E50M, Centurion Action 10, CS63, 430U, and the TVP. Now some of you may be saying, well, I like to use the STB1 or even the 140 in Onslaught, but realistically, these tanks are all better. There is no point of you using an STB1 when you could be using a CS63 or a Centurion Action 10. And hell, even the E50M. If you're brawling, you wanna choose between the E50M and the 430U, these two tanks here, because they get the special ability where they can reload very, very fast. So no, I don't recommend the STB, I don't recommend the UDES, the Batcha, none of these I'd recommend, not even the Leo. I would stick to these five tanks if you want to be actually competitive in Onslaught. And one thing to note about the TVP is that you want to max this out for damage and DPM. So that means that you choose HP, Turbo and Vents, you don't need the stab because you actually get the minus dispersion on the modifier, which yes, this does only affect like the dispersion values, but it does help out actually overall. And then in the field mods for the TVP, you want to change this uh, seventh one, which would usually be on the right to be in on the left. And then also the fifth one, making sure that it's on the left hand side. But for all of these tanks I'm going to be speaking about from now on, you want to be making sure that you have HP Turbo Rammer or HP Turbo Stab. HP Turbo, and then basically either Stab, Vents, or Rammer. Now for the heavy tanks, you will notice that there is no S-Conk in here. And the thing is, there has not really been an S-Conk meta even in the last Onslaught, before it got nerfed. That is because the 60TP will just shred an S-Conk. It can overmatch it, and if you don't overmatch it, you can still just go through it with your heat rounds. And the S-Conk is going to have a pretty tough time to reliably pen the 60TP usually. Especially considering it has a very, very troll lower plate and the s -conks lower plate just isn't troll at all. You also have the 50B in here, but I will admit you need to know what you are doing in the 50B because if you don't, this will just be basically an easy bit of damage for the enemy team. This is best played in a platoon. If you can get two 50Bs in a platoon, you can do some very, very serious damage along with a T57 Heavy, for example, as well. And then also the IS-7 and 277. The thing is, the IS-7 is arguably better, but the pen really, really sucks. Whereas the 277, the, it's more of an all-rounder in comparison to the IS-7. But either works, like they can both be doing the same kind of job. When you're on maps like Ents, you want to pick between the mouse, uh, the 60TP, maybe the BZ-75, although realistically, it's probably going to be the mouse and the 60TP if you want a heavy tank. And finally, for the tank destroyers, the Fosh B. That is it. There's no point playing an STRV, there's no point playing a Gorilla 15, um, there's no point really playing a Hori 3, because if you're playing a sniping tired tank like the Gorilla, like the STRV, if they have a light tank, your tank is irrelevant. And if you want to hold somewhere, you're going to put a heavy tank there rather than one of these sniping tank destroyers. But the Fosh B is genuinely mental. 
This has an ability that when you activate it, you get plus 15% engine power for 7 seconds and your forward and reverse speed is improved by 10 kilometers an hour. After those 7 seconds are up, any damage that you would have taken in those 7 seconds, you then receive back depending on your level. If you have a tier 3 level while you're doing this, you get 85% of whatever damage you took back into hit points plus 100 hit points. Which means that you could go around the corner, pop this ability, and in those 7 seconds you can deal all, your, all of your clip, you then quickly back off, you take a load of damage, but then while you're around that corner, because you're re you reverse at 30 kilometers an hour, right? If you have the field mods and a turbo, you then get back and be safe. And then you start healing everything that you've just lost. So this thing can be absolutely insane in Onslaught. But that is everything that I recommend in Onslaught for this season. I wouldn't recommend any of the others because the other tanks just do it better. And you need to be playing the best tank. So thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, you know what to do. And I'll see you all in the next one.